Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, you may remember from a couple weeks ago, this sovereign citizen, this more sovereign citizen right here, who challenged the authority of Judge Bryant and demanded that, well, she be taken off of his case uh, for whatever reason. I mean, he wasn't exactly clear on it, uh, biased or something like that. I mean, it was a bunch of B uh, sovereign citizen BS to begin with. But now he's back and he's trying to plead his case with a higher judge. Now, let's see if it's going to work on him. But I highly doubt that, considering these, some, a lot of these judges are quite intelligent and know all about sovereign citizens and mores. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right. Okay. Call the case, please. Calling case 02056199901, people of the state of Michigan versus Carnell McCreary L. Today is the time for a motion hearing. Appearances. Good morning, right. Your Honor. And to your staff, Christina Ritter, on behalf of the people, P number 83505. Sir. Colonel Michael McCreary, appearing in appropriate persona. Okay. All right. Um, to my understanding, sir, you filed a motion uh, to have Judge Bryant disqualified uh, from the case. Uh, Judge Bryant uh, denied your motion, and essentially your motion was appealed up to the chief judge, which is me. Is that correct, sir? Well, now let's start off by saying that this Sovtard, well, this Moorish Sovtard, was acting like a horse's ass throughout the entirety of the proceedings last time. And, uh, well, let's go ahead and show the only thing that was uh, relevant to the whole thing, his, well, apparent need to get rid of the judge to begin with, and his, well quite frankly, pathetic rationale behind it. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. Pre-trial conference, how do you wish to proceed? I would like to uh, ask that this court remove itself under MCR 2.003 for judicial bias. Well, this soft heart is not exactly going to get into the exact rationale behind his uh, need to uh, get rid of this judge, but here are the disqualifying factors that uh, are in that uh, citation that he just quoted. And, uh, well, uh, if he personally knew her, maybe this would get by, but I don't think so, so... This could just be another stall tactic on his part, uh, like a lot of sovereign citizens try to pull. Yeah, it most likely was a stall tactic, and uh, I'm sure this judge will take his time to look at the video and see right through it, because it's blatantly obvious to begin with. I mean, uh, Ray Charles could see that. That's correct. Okay. Argument. Well, the argument is, sir, uh, under uh, Michigan Code of Judicial Conduct, uh, the judge is in violation of uh, Canon 1 and 2 because um, I'm here uh, falsely accused for a 21-year-old warrant. Okay, you claim you are uh, falsely accused. You do know that's what the trial is for, right? To determine your guilt or innocence on the charges that you received, you freaking dumbass. And this trying to get the judge dismissed is not exactly going to help your case because you still got to go through the trial process. And no matter what judge you get, it's going to be the same old story. You're going to try to get them dismissed too because you think you're falsely accused. Well, you got to go through the legal process just like everybody else, you freaking idiot. And I try to speak, and she acts like Judge Judy. She just constantly cuts you off, is threatening. So far as be quiet, like, 
I mean, uh, counting to it says public confidence in the judiciary is eroded by irresponsible and improper conduct by judges. A judge must avoid all impropriety. Judge Bryant was not exactly being improper in this case, you dipshit, because you were trying to get the whole thing off off course and she was trying to rein you back in while you were trying to give irrelevant uh, dialogue throughout the whole thing and as far as her acting like judge judy which i know you commented about uh no she didn't act like that at all she was being professional by reining your sorry ass in every single time an appearance of impropriety. A judge must expect to be the subject of constant public scrutiny. A judge must therefore accept restrictions on conduct that might be viewed as burdensome by the ordinary citizen and should be do so freely and willingly, judge. And I come into court very respectful. I'm a 51-year-old man and I respect the system. But I'm feeling that I'm being given, you know, disrespect. I'm being silenced. I mean, I have a right under the free speech to uh, petition the court for redress of grievances and things of that nature. Under the proper proceedings and everything like that, yes, you can redress your government, but that was not the time or place to do it. This was not the trial, and the trial is more or less the place to do that. This was just a preliminary hearing, a pre-trial kind of thing. I mean, it would be a waste of time to address that in that format. And uh, if you look at the TV show Judge Judy, this is how she acts, Judge. And I mean, it's just totally wrong. And she asked me, what did I want to do with the case? I said, I would like to challenge jurisdiction because I went to prison in 02 for 15 years and eight months. They had uh, under the rule, it's, I believe, for misdemeanors, 40 something days for felonies is six months. So I uh, request that the prosecutor prove its authority in bringing these charges so late. And I have been home six and a half years, productive in the community, no problems. And I'm trying to do right, Judge. You know, I made uh, uh, past mistakes when I was a young man, and I'm just being treated like I'm just a criminal. I'm supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, right? Which is what the whole process is all about, but you don't want to go through that. You want to act like a complete jackass and stall as long as you can, as hard as you can, but it's not going to get you anywhere. You may have gotten convicted that first time, but if these charges are no good to begin with, as you say they are, then let the uh, justice system determine that. I mean, it well, couldn't hurt you any worse than it did before. I mean, you spent 15 years in prison for your previous crime where you were convicted. So I'm not trying to disrupt this court. Bullshit! Bullshit! <laughs> I'm not trying to cause you guys uh, hard, hard, hardships or anything, uh, things of that nature. Why must you turn my office into a house of lies? And my due process is being violated. Judge. That's all. I want to just get this case so it wouldn't be left alone. I'm a grandfather. I have children. And their uh, DPD has retaliated against me, Judge. And I know this is a Detroit police court. And I would like an investigation as to things that's been going on by the prosecutor's office because Kim Worthy and her uh, subordinates are retaliating against me. There's actual proof. Well, if there's actual proof, then show it to a lawyer who can advise you on that. Oh, wait, never mind. You're a more softard who prefers not to use the justice system in its proper fashion. So that's never going to get done because you think everything is unfair. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with Bill Proctor. He's uh, representing me in this matter and another matter so far as investigations for uh, years of, you know, hardships and, and, and tyranny committed against me by the system here in Wayne County. So this is all I want a fair shake, Judge, a judge who's going to uh, give me due process and give me what I'm a court, you know, entitled to a court of law. And that's it, sir. Okay. Ms. Ritter, would you like to respond in any way? Um, Judge, the only response that people have is that this is a case from 2002. It's a misdemeanor assault and battery case. Judge, from my recollection of the prior hearing with Judge Bryant, um, I do believe 
if I'm not mistaken, that it was an arraignment process. Um, and as the court was trying to proceed with the process, um, I do remember Mr. McCreary um, interrupting the judge while she was trying to make the record, but the people have not gotten to the point where, um, because Mr. Carnell was disruptive during the proceedings, the people didn't get to the point where there was another um, pretrial date set where the people could actually see if we were able, were able to move forward on this 2002 case, Judge. So it was a pretrial hearing, an arraignment to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty on a misdemeanor charge from 2002. Now, if he had entered a plea of not guilty and continued on, this whole thing probably would have ended up in a short trial determined to determine his guilt or innocence or anything like that. Uh, or they would have reached a plea deal and uh, it would have been over with and he probably wouldn't have had any prison time or anything like that. I mean, that's quite a common occurrence. But no, he just has to act like a damn jackass. Okay. I have a rebuttal. Yes. Okay, Judge, um, I would like you, if it's possible, I know you guys are on Zoom, so you have should have access to recordings of these uh, hearings and things of that nature. I believe that the uh, prosecutor just fabricated facts to you because I was not rude to this lady. I asked, all I asked her is like, she said, what do you want to be done with this case? I said, I would like to challenge jurisdiction. And Michigan and federal law requires once jurisdiction is challenged, it must be proven. How is it that the prosecutor knows statute limitations? They're licensed. I'm not licensed. I've studied for years in prison. And they don't know that there's a statute of limitations. This is vindictive prosecution because of my complaints against Kim Worthy, right? And the record will reflect the evidence. And I object to her statements. Okay. One, one second. Uh, one, one second, sir. I, I, I have to shut off my video for 10 seconds and be right back. I'm having a little technical difficulty right now. So. Yes. Hmm. All right. All right. Court, court having uh, had a chance to hear the arguments of of the uh, the moving party, as well as the um, the arguments of the prosecutor, um, the excuse me, the moving party is asking for a a recusal or to have uh, Judge Bryant disqualified based on. Uh, Michigan canons one and two, uh, based on um, that she is biased, as well as is not allowing a person uh, to be able to basically argue their case. Uh, the moving party is stating that he, he wants to challenge jurisdiction um, and that he was not allowed to do so. The prosecutor is stating that there was only a proceeding at an arraignment mm -hmm and that the prosecution hasn't even got to the point where they have established whether they want to move forward with the case, but that was not allowed to happen because uh, in, in their view, um, there was um, disruption in the court and there, there, was, there was a breakdown. Um, the uh, moving party is disputing that. He's saying that you can even go, that I could go to the video or the tapes to, to, to dispute that. Um, at this time, the court is going to, um, the court is not going to make a decision at this point. I am going to, uh, I am going to pull the tape, uh, pull the transcript. I'm going to make a decision very quickly on this. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let this um, continue. And even based on, you know, the court does have an opinion, probably on the likelihood of prosecution one on a 21 year old case. Uh, so we're going to come back on, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to come back on July 6th at. 10 a.m. Please check your schedule, sir. Uh, may I also, you say July 6th, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yes. May Next I time. also, if I may check, just... No, check, check, check your schedule first. Check your schedule to see if are you available for that time. <laughs> I'm available. I'm stuck here on Tether, sir. I'm available at any time you guys want me to... Okay. All right. Well, ten, put on your schedule for 10 o'clock on July 6th. Okay, can I say one more thing? Uh, if you look at Crampton versus uh, Michigan Department of State 395, Michigan 347 at 351, it says the United States Supreme Court disqualified judges and decision makers without a showing of actual bias in situations where experience teaches that the probability of actual bias on the part of the judge or decision maker is too high to be constitutionally tolerable. 
And I'm not saying like trying to attack Judge Brian or whatever else, but she has an attitude like Judge Judy. She just cuts you off. And I'm just like, so when she kept doing it, this is when I objected and asked her to re uh, recuse herself, sir. But I, I won't. Good. And, and, yes, and, sir. and sir, I and, and again, as as the chief judge, I don't have to I don't have to have a showing of actual bias, but perceived bias, something in the fairness of justice, I, that that is my standard. So, with that being sure. said, uh, ten a.m. on July sixth, this is I'm. Well, then July sixth is not that far away, and uh, all he has to do is take a look at the uh, tape and uh, rule on it, but. Uh, if that's all he has to do, then it should be a uh, quick ruling. I mean, the guy was acting acting like a complete jackass, but that's not the judge rule on that. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.